the top left, the red turn player for Team Liquid. It is Uthermal. Uthermal. I like that segment. Yesterday, I think it was. Where they were all, tr they were all trying to pronounce Uthermal. Or, well, the Uwu in uh, Uthermal. Oh, I didn't uh, see that it, one. Yeah, it's pretty good. Elaser actually refused. He said, I'm not a weeb. <laughs> I will not I will not say that. <laughs> Yeah. That actually does not surprise me. <laughs> not at all. That lives up to my expectations. Yes, indeed. And we see here Elaser is scouting for proxies, as he should. Elaser is one of the most methodical, most structured players in the scene. If Elaser doesn't know what to do, um, or if you throw a wrench into his plan, that's where you can start to see flaws. But if he gets to execute his plan, he's one of the best in the world. Yeah, he's um, he really has just something about his play as well, where he can just be so so dangerous, but so solid macro wise as well. It's um, very very fun to watch him in, and this group really is crazy as well. It's just on the side of the screen, but just to recap that idea of just you know Vanya's three and one as well, so he's playing a big match today to try and stay four and one. This match it really puts into perspective how important this matchup is for you, Thermal, because he really doesn't want him to fall behind the rest of the pack. Yeah, most definitely. And Euthermal is a tricky player, and maybe that's why the bookies have him as a favorite here as well, because mm. I, I feel like power level one wise, Elaser is stronger. But when I compare the play styles, I feel like Euthermal can definitely is the type of player that will throw in wrenches and will throw in strategies that Elaser may not be super ready for. And that is, you know, like having heard countless times Elaser talk to the likes of Lambo uh, and to other pro players, I feel like he's always kind of asking like what is exactly the thing like how many corruptors exactly should i make you know he's not the type of player to to think on his feet and a lot of the time that is um one of his biggest flaws as a player i think that that he's not very adaptive he needs to know what he's doing hmm. i can um i can believe that a little bit actually yeah that makes a bit of sense and obviously then that's very weak against someone like Heath thermal he does you know, mix it up a lot, who is very adaptive. Mm -hmm. He really does kind of make it so different game by game. And as this game, he will just triple CC right off the bat here on Light Shade, so not going to be doing anything too aggressive. Just more or less a pretty macro-focused setup for the start of this. Yeah. Makes for a very odd match, too, because it's kind of like they swap roles, right? Like, Terran is usually the more structured race, whereas Zerg is more free-flowing just by design. But these two players, I mean, the Euthermal has to be one of the most um, adaptive and most creative Terran players in Europe, and Elaser has to be one of the more structured and methodical certs in Europe. Yeah, it actually really is a clash of styles when you put it like that. As you thermal. At least this game will play super normal to begin with, right? But then it's always a question of when is that twist coming? When is it going to be that, uh, that mix-up, which we know you thermal is oh so often bringing into the game, so... Kind of weighing on that as our first Viking begins. And, it, and this does not get more standard than this, though, right? Because he's just going to get Viking. Yeah. Fast Stim as well, so he'll be onto Stim quickly. I mean, New Thermal could not be playing more normal right now. As one Ling, though, going to see everything in this main base. And that's a shame to let so much information go after free. Yeah, and Elaser has to be feeling pretty good. Because like you said, this is normal. This is Elaser's wheelhouse. This, he will have played this game thousands of time and uh he will be excellent i think at executing as far as that is uh, as far as that goes he's again one of the best i think so i like the position already from a laser just based off of the openings and that euthermal is not doing anything too crazy we'll see if uh, anything changes up in the next little while as we do have our droning going on from a laser as well i mean he's probably just thinking about i think that's a drone in position on the fourth base on the bottom side as well by the way do you like this going to the fourth down here rather than over to that right side um i'm not quite sure actually i haven't put a lot of thought into it i do wonder uh what he wants from that base maybe he just wants to you know take the bottom bases a little bit earlier i think it's a little bit more susceptible right because if you go for a normal tank push on that high ground where the tanks are so strong then that that fourth base gets sieged a lot easier um because then you have the option to go into the third or the fourth so you can kind of siege from the high ground and and then you can send a smaller squad to the fourth i'm not quite sure what the upside of this is yeah maybe it's just like overall a bit more setback 
but but then mm-hmm. has better positions for the Terran to work around that with. So yeah, it, it's interesting. There's also just the fact that that right side, sometimes you get that tank on the low ground, that choke point gets mm-hmm. held up, and that can be annoying to deal with as well. And that's something the Terran can you know rally too quickly because they've got the third base on the low ground, etc. So maybe just playing around with that idea. It's definitely a fun little uh, little adjustment though. From it's not it's not being never seen before, right? But I wouldn't say this is the most common way of setting up four bases. Yeah, and there's I mean this game has been as normal as it gets. So I think this is a more interesting development that we've seen in it so far. Thinking on it further, it's pretty decent against drops, right? Drops will get spotted very early, so it, in a certain sense it protects the main. If the laser was planning to go into Muta, all of a sudden I like it a lot more because his bases are a lot more condensed, right? Whereas if he had the, the vertical third base, then he would have to travel much longer distances with those mm. Muta. Um, so those are two upsides, I suppose. Yeah, that's very true. They're kind of like, you know, that you can kind of like join the dots much more easily here and there's no one big line between any you know, any two bases, right? Whereas if you go from main to that mm-hmm. top side base, yeah, it is that little bit further run to. So, yeah, it could be something like that. could just be that as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess I was just more or less going to repeat the same thing in different words. So I'll just stop while I'm ahead as <laughs> you're going to see you film. We'll go for a bit of a push chow down to the south side with a couple of Widow Mines here and if you catch a few of these lanes ahead of time, that'd be great. Banes don't have Bane speed yet, but Laser just jumps on this. Ooh. One Widow Mine still retarding, oh. does get the Bane lanes. Oh, that was unfortunate because I think he also used two Banes to blow it up in the end as well. So he actually lost mm. a bunch of Banes to that. A lot. And the worst part of it all is that he wasn't paying attention to his links in the process, right? Because he was paying attention to detonating the Bane links and splitting the other set of Bane links. So his links just run straight into the Marines and got demolished as well. So terrible trades for a laser to start. Yeah, definitely not the best. You're just going to get those lings around. Just going to be able to knock down that set of rocks as well. It's so just going to clean that up. And I'm coming around the right side. And all of you them on the bottom left. I love the split pushing, but he's got a lot of creep to get through to get anywhere meaningful, apart from maybe that right side fifth hatch. But I'm not sure if I'm convinced that this group of Hellbats and a handful of Marines are going to do much over there. Probably not against that many Banelings, but remember there's the other squad in the south as well. And this is really nice for your Thermal because he's he's spreading Elaser very thin here. Elaser has to regroup and find a way to deal with both armies. He's going to lose already three workers in the process. Your Thermal will find a nice choke, but has to load up sooner rather than later because there's a Spore as a timer as well. On the other side, the Marines will most likely get held back by the Queens. And with the reinforcing links, a laser will stabilize, but not without that supply disadvantage. Yeah, you still will already have momentum working in his favor, and a laser just cannot spend his money. He's got a little bit of lava free, but not enough to spend 900 minerals. And this is one of the problems when you play Sterling Bane Heavy. Your injects have got to be perfect. He even had it on a macro hatchery and still has a lava problem. Because right now he has a banning problem as well. No Banes. On this initial bottom side, oh, and the few that show up fire. just get target fired, so it is not going to matter. Now some extra showing up. Euthermal oh. stuck around too long, though. Oh, this was so good for Euthermal until he just didn't realize that a laser was finally there with Bane lanes and finally committing into the fight. Yeah, and at that point, I mean, I think you just stare down at the hatchery because you're so close to killing it, right? So he decides, okay, like after that, I probably get the hatchery. I can look somewhere else. I can macro or something. But I think you just stare down at the hatchery because it's such a big price to take if you can take it down. And uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of resets things a little bit for a laser. The macro hatch is kind of in a weird position for me. Not, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I wouldn't hate it if he needed it for spreading creep or something like that. Oh, this pain links. Oh, very nice. Yeah, that's going to be really nice. A couple of these fights from the bottom slide, that one where the Banes crashed in and just now with the Bane lanes uh, being burrowed, these are things which really reset the momentum a little bit and they just take that little bit of speed away from you thermal and makes him slow down and that's going to be what gives a laser a lot of hope in this game, right? Being able to actually say, right, give me a chance to survive, give me a chance to build back up properly rather than just kind of throwing wave and wave of units that, you know, wave after wave of units at me. And Eliza now actually has been able to have some time. He's spending his money a little bit better. And you can see that the supply gap is closing. Biggest issue, 2-2 two, two versus 1-1. One, one. That upgrade lead for you, Thermal, is pretty darn serious and is going to be sticking around for a little while. Yeah, he's going to go for the snipe on this hatchery. The entire uh, army of Eliza is parked there. However, 
And I love this move from Euthermal, only dropping a few Marines and then going to the main with the rest of them. He has applied great pressure. The supplies are very even, but the trades have actually been greatly in favor of Euthermal if we look at the units lost up for a second. Yeah, 10 drones going down as well as we just pushed through with Widowmine still set up over here. And they connect pretty well. One actually leads onto the Overseer, which wasn't even that bad because at least it didn't go from onto the Overseer above the bio unit. And it's just again a laser money floating. Not quite there on upgrades. Trades just being that little bit, I say a little bit, a lot better for you, Thermal. Let's be realistic. Twice as efficient this game is uh, a stat you don't always hear. Yes, indeed. And, and furthermore, for a laser, there hasn't been any tech, right? Like this type of uh, style is meant to overwhelm this type of push that Euthermal has been throwing, but Euthermal has traded so cost efficiently throughout the game that it just hasn't been the case. And so a laser drops down his first tech in years, it feels like, which is an infestation pit. And regardless of that, I mean, he wasn't able to contend with these pushes of Euthermal, which are now relentless. Euthermal gets a 50 supply advantage after taking a hatchery as well. These widow mines. One has 29 kills, another oh. has 13. This one probably has Jeez. 10. I mean, it is just relentless what the widow mines are finding in all of the fights. And, you know, this is a laser now just kind of looking in different places and not quite being able to pay attention everywhere. Widow mines on being properly cleaned up. And it's one of the big things about having momentum in this TVZ just the potential to have widow mines that are left behind after a fight and then they find further value. And that's why you've always got to be on top of cleaning up these armies instead of scrambling from one fight to the next and never properly finishing a cleanup in one position. Yeah, and cleanups on the north as well, because of what we were talking about earlier with the hatchery in position down here first. I mean, he never really, a laser never really got creep spread up on that north side. So every attack has been kind of a surprise for him over there. And Euthermal has done a great job of abusing the lack of creep, the lack of information that a laser has been having to work with. The map is dark for a laser, and his chances are looking grim at this point. I feel like this is really nice for Euthermal too, because I would imagine Lightshade was probably a laser's map pick as well. So maybe he has uh, some FGG. good kind of news coming into game number two from as well, that he might be then playing on his preferred map. And we'll find out what that map is in a second as Euthermal goes up one to zero. I mean, this was a game of momentum, Cats. Euthermal starts off well, a laser has definitely some issues macro-wise, but this is a matchup where mechanically, if you fall behind in one place, you're going to fall behind in other places. And that's definitely what we saw a lot of here, just unable to keep up, losing a bit of money, not having the hatcheries you need or the lava that you need. And then you just slowly get whittled down over time. And he had a couple of good fights, you know, when those banes crashed in, when the burrowed banes went off. It just wasn't enough to really turn it around. I take it back. Euthermal picked Lightshade. A laser picks 2000 atmospheres. But that's because I guess Euthermal wants this to go to um, Oxide Game 3. That would have typically been the expected map pick of a Terran player. So it's still in there. Now that he's won one map, he's guaranteed to see it as well. Yeah, for sure. And even though the, the Baneling Bomb was decent, it left a lot of Marines on the red because it wasn't actually positioned as far left as it could have been. Uh, it was kind of like a little bit to the right of the middle of the ramp, right? Like, which what just wasn't perfect. It wasn't as good as it could have been, sadly. And I think that maybe there was a mine in the way that, that you know, made his shift click not burrow where he wanted or something. But, uh, but yeah, all in all, a uh, really good game won from your thermal. So going to 2000 Atmospheres, this is definitely a map that strikes me as the kind of map you then will probably play mech on. It's a map he played mech on against mm. Vanya. I, I remember correctly against Vanya, he played like mech on map one, 2000 Atmospheres, and then game two was bio, and then game three, it was Oxide, and he played mech again. Um, so we'll see if, like I say, he sticks with that. Or, you know, it has been a few days as well. Maybe he's changed up. Maybe he's changed his mind on how to approach the matchup. Maybe he's looked at those replays and said, man, I was doing so well with mech and it still just sucks. So maybe he doesn't <laughs> play it because sometimes Terrans have that phase when it comes to playing mech. As we're going to go down to the bottom left-hand side with our red Terran player from Team Liquid, it's Youth Thermal. And in the top right-hand side of the map, playing as the blue Zerg, it is a laser for AGO, Hago, XCOM Hago. The Eagle. <laughs> what sound does an Eagle make, Wardy? A bird sound. 
Oh, come on. You, what, you want me to demonstrate what an eagle sounds like live on stream? Yes, please. I just don't know. I don't think I'm being paid enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, like, fair enough. Like kind of like a kaka, but like with a lot of force behind it. I don't know. Mm, I don't think I've ever heard an eagle. I thought it was like, ah! Yeah, some, I was going to say some kind of like screeching sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we can be in agreement. I, I feel like a bit higher pitched than what you were going for, though. Show me. I, I can't go that high, I don't think. Fair enough. I just don't think I can do the eagle sound justice, you know? Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> it is the mascot of America, so, you know, if you can't do it justice, then you, should, you just shouldn't. Well, I, I wouldn't want the, the viewers to A, hear that, and, and B, hate me for it, so... Mm -hmm. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, not much going on in this game so far. And also important to note, Wardy, that, that that was kind of like what I would have considered a laser's wheelhouse as far as play styles are concerned. Your thermal didn't really do anything too out of the ordinary, right? It was mostly a laser perhaps complicating things for him, taking that uh, odd, I don't know if it's even fair to call it odd, fourth base. Um, mm. But other than that, I mean, it was it was a pretty standard game, pretty straightforward. Yeah, I don't even hate the fourth base, I just think. Yeah. Again, it's just, you know, some of those mechanics slip right. By the way, 1-1 one, one, Lobo and Denver, just quickly as the other result is on the screen. The Lobo has mm. shown up in this tournament, man. And that's like, I feel like this is like silently happening over a lot of the B stream matches, you know, but he is just having a really good tournament. So that's really cool. But to uh, turn our attention back to the TVZ, it, it was just one of those games where I feel like, you know, maybe you missed an inject, maybe things just went a little bit out of hand. And to be fair, Uthum was one of those players that is really good at playing with speed, right? He's really good at playing quickly and being, you know, relentless. And a lot of the time, if you can get to something like Lurkers, you thermal kind of falters because he's like, oh, that takes away everything I want to be doing. And then you're in control of the game. Obviously, if you kind of falter a little bit as a laser, you thermal's the kind of player who I think is going to be one of the better players at punishing that. Uh, and I feel like we did see a pretty good example of that just there in game number one. Yeah, for sure. And and I have to say, you, uh, a laser has never been much of a Lurker guy. Uh, he's tried them on multiple occasions, but never feels like like they work for him. So uh, I don't think we'll be seeing that. I don't think I've seen many lurkers from him, but it would be cool for to, to see him try regardless. He has played them a few times, very map dependent. I remember him playing against Hero Marine in some open cups. This is probably last year and mm -hmm. having a lot of uh, cool games with lurkers, which then kind of got... Uh, the problem he had with Lurkers was they always felt like all of a sudden he would just get dropped to death, even though he has Hydras and stuff, and just felt like the drops became uncontrollable for him, so... Yeah. Yeah. Another very good scout here on the side of a laser. We'll get a Ling run in all the way to the main. And uh, retaliation to some degree by Euthermal, but his Reaper may not be so lucky. Well, I guess the Ling also died, but the Reaper is the greater price, and a laser will collect without uh, Euthermal really getting to the main. Another uh, reasonable players. We do see a drone out to the right side. Hellions do not get the block. Mm. That's a shame, you thermal just not quite looking there in that exact moment. Yeah, and this is kind of the same idea as on the other map, right? It's the the fourth that you would less expect in the matchup. Is that fair to say? Um, Yeah, I don't feel like you see that far right-hand side base so often as the fourth, right? Usually that's maybe the... The fifth base that you go to rather than continuing upwards, but yeah, well, a little bit different. It's one of those things as well, I, I just don't quite see necessarily what you're aiming for here as well with that base. Mm -hmm. Kind of similar to the last guy. Like, I'm sure there's some good reasons for it, but there's nothing that's like super outstanding. Like some maps where a, a weird base sometimes is like, well, you can do this or for a certain style, this is very good. I don't really see it with this. And, one thing as well, I feel like, is that the creep in front of that fourth base is going to be that little bit slower than if you took the fourth on the 12 o'clock position, where there's already, like, creep starting to cover the front of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something to think about, too, that you're just not going to have creep there for a little while. Yeah, indeed. I do like the creep on the other side, at least, because that will be his fifth base, almost for sure. But it pretty much has to be his fifth base. So, uh, so yeah, it's good that he started the creep on that side for the time being. But yeah, what I do like about this fourth base is that it contests the Terran army 
on even ground, right? Whereas normally the Terran can actually siege up the high ground, up the ramp, um, and then siege your third base with tanks on the high ground. So that negates that. The, the disadvantage, of course, is that you're very close to the Terran third, and you're very close to the Watchtower, which the Terran can just siege, defend his third, and, and kind of start a push onto your base, or at least apply pressure to where you have to have an army there. Um, and, and that seems really annoying. I'm not sure that I love this, uh, this position. Mm. Yeah, no, I can uh, appreciate it once we get ourselves. Our first little move out here from Ethanol is, by the way, just again, that full-on bio play. So really just kind of sticking to what worked well for him in game one. I like it because I'm not going to like how it's... I've seen mech work, but I'm, I'm still never a fan of mech because it feels like sometimes with mech, you can be so far ahead and do so many things and still not be winning the game. And it's uh, yeah. kind of wild, man. This creep goes down already. I'm worried about the creep Ooh. spread in front of this base, but I wouldn't mind retarget. Oh, wow. does connect at the end. Yeah, very good target firing on the first Widow Mine, however, from a laser to take it down before it burrowed by, uh, you know, using all of his links. But in retaliation, you thermal did just as well, if not better, with the uh, retarget firing there. So nice moves. And yeah, I mean, I am still concerned about Euthermal just being able to take that watchtower and retreat to that watchtower and kind of just siege creep from there. A laser is going to just, he's had enough of it, I guess. So it goes off creep for a second, but that's dangerous in itself. Now start split pushing to the top side as well. Euthermal with a drop and a couple widow mines there. And the split pushing actually did pretty well last game too and definitely started to pull a laser around a lot. And it's a way to run from, you know, top here to the, to the far right hand side on the other you know, side of the map. As another, again, Widow Mine is just going to connect pretty well and getting a decent cleanup to begin with. I feel like that's kind of becoming the tale of these games as well, that the Widow Mines are just finding so many good connections, mm -hmm. and the laser's just not quite splitting away the lings as he needs to. And that's just such an important skill in the TVZ. It's important to split in your Marines. You know, if you don't split your Marines against the Banelings, that will go badly. And yeah, you can absorb a few bad Baneling shots. You know, what happened in the last game, you thermally had a couple bad Banelings. That's fine, but you can't eat every single Banelink shot. And it's the same with Widow Mines. If you let every single Widow Mine have a more than reasonable connection, you're going to naturally start falling behind. Yeah, for sure. That was a that was a great Umburrow from Euthermal. So he has been excellent at the micro, right? Because if he doesn't Umburrow, then his Marines will die to, to those uh, smaller number of links. I love that Burrow from Elaster. And this one too! Oh, no! Oh, that was too close. That scan is um, <laughs> oh, a little bit it. rough. Kind of gets the Banelings off there in the end as Ethan will kite back. But in mind, this time goes off on the Overseer. Uh, there is still detection nearby, and that is going to be all the Wooden Mines cleared out. And Ethan will not make progress anywhere, really. Um, I mm -hmm. guess towards his own fourth base. He won't be slowed down too much towards that. He has got drilling claws on the way up as well. This game allows just keeping everything much better controlled. Yeah, those banes were barely missed by that scan. And again, actually, those banelings wow. have avoided two scans exactly. The luckiest banelings in the world. That's uh, that's pretty incredible, actually. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're not in any dangerous path for you, Thermal, so he may never run into them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, but, they're uh, kind of like a little bit off position. And maybe that's why they're surviving the scans too a little bit, yeah. right, for so long, because you Thermal just isn't quite expecting them to be where they are. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. see if they do so at some point, though. Get to make their play. They counterattack on the left side, and this is something a laser was never comfortable enough to do last game because, well, he was kind of losing the entire time. So this time, not quite the case. And we are going to be able to see u -thermal coming through to clean up those lanes, push that back. His fourth can't land just yet either. Let's see how he trades here. Uh, this is an important trade because it really depends on whether you can take the fourth base after it or not. Yeah, and they will get nine SCVs for his troubles, a laser with that last set of Bane links. 50 more Zerglings in production. A laser is just relentless. This time around, he is getting to Hive Tech already, burrowing uh, Bane links all over the place. So that's going to, at the very least, slow down you thermal. I'm not sure that. I oh, great Widow Mine hit. And I yeah, I'm not entirely sure that I like a laser pressing the issue here. But I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe one of these is bound to work and then it'll just do it, right? Yeah, it feels like it's a bit reckless, though, at this stage. Like, mm. that attack on the left side is one where I feel like you run forward, you see it, and you just pull it back. And instead, he runs the units in. Yes, he thermal has to micro to make sure it's not a terrible trade, but he does micro. And so it's a pretty good trade. He loses one or two Marines, and 
He cleans up a good few lings and a couple of ban lanes, and that is the sort of efficiency that will help you thermal out as this game carries on and he finally gets the fourth base up and running. He's already trading once again twice as well as a laser has been throughout the game. It's just this time a laser has his bases kind of kept together much better. He's not losing workers. He's not losing bases like he did last game uh, a whole bunch. So, you know, at least this time he's the aggressor and you thermal can't punish bad trades. Yeah, the Widow Mines for the first time in a while were not completely successful here. The Banelinks roll in a little bit later than the rest of the army, but the Lynx, regardless, just go uh, very far forward. <laughs> Hopeful Banelinks yep. there. But, uh, it out. yeah, I mean, these are not great trades for a laser, but like you said, he has the economy to kind of sustain this for a little while. Now, uh, he has gotten to Hive Tech, but he's just going to use it for Ling upgrades and only now starting plus one attack, actually. I would don't mind. This finds a good chunk of links to begin with as we do run in again. I mean, we've been relentless in this position as laser just non-stop running in and eventually... Wow. Oh, SCVs get saved. I was going to say, eventually he actually gets a really good connection, but nope, still not. Yeah, very nice cancel on the depot first to actually make those uh, run away. And then the load up was oh. beautiful. I'm fortunate for a laser here that is sure to get uh. repaired. And that's this so is, bad. Yeah, like, it really that's just is so expensive. You know, when you throw banes at a planter, you need to kill the planter. You can't allow the Terran to keep mining after because those banes are just nowhere near efficient. And that's the sort of thing that makes a massive difference over time as well. We are now at almost a 12,000 resources loss difference between the two of them. If that number keeps going up, Euthermal is just going to have a field day. All he needs to do is eventually get a fifth base. Doesn't have to be right now, can be in a little while. I mean, and he's just going to oh. continue to be gold, and this time the split is good against the Widow Mine from a laser. Yeah, the Banes might connect, could kill the SCC actually if they all yeah. go off on it, and they will. So, good job there by a laser. And this is kind of what I was talking about style, stylistically. A laser can do this thing where he will just kind of get in a mode and just keep going and keep going until he wins or loses the game. If he doesn't have a transition, he will be slow to it. Finally, an Ultral is then getting added. Uh, but, he's 50 uh, he's army supply behind cats. Like, he needs yeah. to survive right now. And he's got a lot of Ling Bane over here. Balins are going to be real important because okay. they provide a lot of damage. But you can just see, this was not close to cleaning up. And there's Liberators over here, too. They're going to be a little bit frustrating to get through and to deal with and to fight into. And the lasers just can't win a fight on either side of the map. Banes keep rolling into Marauders. None of them are connecting on Marines. These few Zerglings run through and maybe Euthermal does get cleaned out over here, but the trades continue in his favor and he is doubling the army supply with more lip sieging on the top side of the map. This base is going to go down. Some Queens flanking Euthermal could probably deal with that actually as well, these few Marauders are still going. I thought this was going to get cleaned up, but nope, Marauders still chilling. And that means that this base will eventually go down too. Now a laser really is taking the damage that is likely to see him out of this game. Yeah, very likely. And I really don't like the decision to go for the Ultras now. They will pop up, I think, without the, their Ultra upgrades. But more so than that, I mean, Elaser has been on Euthermal's side of the map for the entirety of the game. And I feel like that would have been an opening if he had the Ultraless Cavern then to kind of start producing these Ultras. Instead, he produces them while he is trying to hold. So they're going to pop out. You know, they don't make quick as quickly as Lynx do. So they're gonna pop up, and yeah, they're gonna they're gonna push back you thermal, but not before losing two bases. So I feel like if there was ever a time to not transition, it's while your opponent is on top of you. At least the laser killed that third base initially as well. Before this, though, that definitely slows you thermal down a lot. He's only been long distance mining mm -hmm. there. He tries to put his main base orbital there now too, and it isn't a great eco for you thermal at all back at home. Like if you thermal had built up another CC and was ready to take a fifth base during all this, I'm loving it for him. But because yeah. obviously that is just absolutely not the case, I'm not really loving it for him. Yeah, that is a very good point. The income graph just popped as well before us. And it shows that a laser has still has a very sizable advantage in spite of losing those two bases. However, mm. the army supply is the opposite story with yeah. Euthermal actually doubling a laser. And I love that a laser is going for investors. I don't think he has pathogen glands, however, so they're not going to come in handy for a little while. Where are they? Where are those? Yeah, they don't. Uh, I mean, obviously, Euthermal's army is massive. And if he, as long as he can turn this army into success, that's fine. I think he will do that as well. He's way back up on army supplies, so backing off for a few moments and worked wonders for him. 
And because Eliza did lose those bases, he's not really been able to build up much himself. The Banes don't even get a chance to connect. You mentioned those Infestors don't have much on them. They really don't. They get turned around extremely easily. And or would we go once more? Those couple of Ultras wanting to join in, but not quite making it across. Yeah, I love the idea from Elazer to take the other side of the map for now. I don't know that I love him trying to defend this uh, this area for now, though. And he lets the Hatchery finish, but Euthermal is doing is getting fantastic trades on this side of the map. The mines have just been amazing throughout the entire series. And uh, finally, the Infestors do have Fungal, though. Yeah, which is nice. Is that going to buy you enough time? Two, three Fungal growths? Probably Ooh. not. I mean, that one misses a little bit too much, uh, too yeah. many units as well. Uh, there's a Burrowed Bailing by just, again, None of it is quite enough for a laser who is just so far down. I mean, these units are in the red, though. But you actually need to be able to get units on top of the red edge health units to kill them. I guess the Broodlings pop in help with that a little bit. Ethan will still just continue on the right side, though. Relentless pushing forward. And at this point, a laser is building nothing but Zerglings. And uh, that doesn't bode well as the game progresses. It really does. And Euthermal with beautiful focus firing there on the very big ultralisk so not the most skillful but definitely you know the right decision as far as that focus fire is concerned and with this i think that's gonna be it as the laser will tap out and you thermal will take a convincing 2-0 yep he was in control of those games start through